Yeah, at least one, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> God's like, no, just you. Could there be somebody rich or stronger, faster, prettier, younger, or more awesome than me that could do this? That's what I said. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. Don't read the next line. What do you think he's going to do after his anger burns against Moses? He said, you ungrateful jerk. I have promised to be with you. I have given you a staff of power. I have uniquely equipped you. I have commanded you to go. What is wrong with you, dude? No, he says another helpful thing. Even though he's burning with anger, he says, what about your brother, Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and he will be glad to see you. And that is because people are gifts, and God lines them right up so that right when we're like, I don't, I don't got this, he's like, And then he says, you shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. And it's like, we call this teamwork, people. <laughs> but take this staff in your hand. So you can perform the signs with it. So it was three gifts. It was God's presence, it was a gifted brother, and it was an ordinary offering transformed by God's power utterly. Okay, third thing. This is the joy. <laughs> All right. He promises. Now, if you haven't read the Bible enough, you might not know this stuff, but this is all in there. We are promised blessing, honor, abundance, peace, treasure, and rest. So all those things should give us great joy. He doesn't promise us a perfect life. He doesn't promise us prosperity on earth. But he does promise us blessing, honor, abundance, peace, treasure and rest when we bow our gifts to him and that great satisfaction of knowing that we glorified him by bowing those things I don't know if you guys re remember the line from Chariots of Fire where Eric Little says God is named fast and when I run I feel his pleasure that's one example of what I'm talking about that something as simple as an ability being bowed to the Lord brought him great, the pleasure of God, because God was being glorified, and he knew God was pleased with it, with that, or that, that gift. So he gives us the equipment, we, we give the gift back to him, and then he gives again to us. So that's the next line. He gives. He gives, we give, he gives again. Do we believe that he will give again? Do we believe enough to bow down the thing? Because the again doesn't happen until after the we give. Mostly, in my experience. Okay. So there's two things we're going to do after, and these are the again. This is verse 29 of, oh, I actually don't know. I was cutting and pasting like such a fiend that I don't know what chapter this is from. But Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites. This is after they get back. And Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He performed the signs for the people. And they were like, whoo, ah, and believed. It doesn't say the part about whoo, ah. That was just, but I bet they said that. <laughs> And when they heard from the spokesman extraordinaire that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, 
they bowed down and worshipped. That's what it says. I'm not making this up. <laughs> because the reason for the gift is to bring glory to God. Okay. There's one more part. Do I want to do this part? I'm skipping that. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not. All right. We talked about the fact that we have courage because we're equipped. And we bow because we're commanded. But we're commanded to use the gifts. If we don't use the gift, it's nothing. It's a devastation. In the Gospel of Matthew, a rich man approaches Jesus and asks him how to have eternal life. Jesus tell, tells him, sell all you have and give it to the poor. It says, the man went away sad because he had great wealth. Now, I don't know why, but recently this story has just broken my heart. Because I've always thought, because I've never been like a super wealthy person, more on the other end, in my perception, that it's sort of the responsibility of the wealthy to give. But suddenly it hit me that he could not use his gift because he was like addicted to his wealth. And he leaves, he leaves sad because he knows he cannot give it up. And he actually, he actually chooses wealth over eternal life. Like, straight in Jesus' face, he, like, walks away sad, knowing he can't do it. Now, I don't know, maybe later on he, like, realized how dumb that was. We are all commanded to give of our gifts, and it is actually easier to give your gift when you see it as from the Lord and intended to glorify him. But when you see it as your possession, you feel very reluctant to bow it. But God promises that he will resupply... And here, I, I, I'm going to refer mostly to possessional stuff, but other stuff is true as well. But he will resupply it abundantly in a way that shows his glory. Like, flat out. And this is the scary one, because you have to bow it before he resupplies it. So there is like a little bit of lag time that will freak you right out. But this is what we see in scripture, and I'm just going to give you five of them. Elijah asked the widow to give her last flour and oil before she starves to death, and it lasts for days and days and days. The Israelites are given manna, which they use, they eat up, and it is replenished every single day. Isaac give, Abraham gives up Isaac, and God provides a ram. The boy gives Jesus five loaves and two fish, and Jesus multiplies it and feeds the 5,000. The disciples give their vocations, their time, and their lives, and what did they get back? They got their time, a vocation, and eternal life. God commands in Luke, give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. If you want to read more cool stories, check out my blog. There's tons of them. Just a little plug. All right. On first time at Timothy, oh, how am I? Do I'm doing terrible on time. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. First Timothy six. Wait, how much time do I have? <laughs> Ten minutes. I've been recording for thirty seconds.